In this video, we're going to be playing about with the do the following until logic in Flow Designer. What does it mean? How can you use it? Let's find out. Roll the intro. Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at do the following until logic in Flow Designer. But before we get started, there's two things I'm going to pick on. Number one is the YouTube stats still are telling me that there's 90% of you that are watching this are not yet subscribed. That's naughty. It's, it's naughty. <laughs> Please go ahead and do something that makes a massive difference to the channel. The second thing is who came up with the name of do the following until? I mean, it's logical. I get it. It makes sense. It's human readable. It's where we're going with Flow Designer. But can you imagine the marketing meeting they had around this? Guys, we've got this new logic. What should we call it? Well, it's kind of like a while loop and we do stuff until something finishes. Let's call it do the following until. Come on. Could have come up with a snappier title, surely. Enough said. Let's get in, see what it's all about. So I thought we'd start over on the ServiceNow doc site. I can't think of a better place to start. This gives us a bit more info about what it actually is, but it also gives us an example. This isn't the example we're going to use, but let's have a look because I'll be able to explain it a bit better for you. So what we'll see is in ServiceNow, we're going to have this, this logic that's called do the following un until... I've got to think of a better name. I, I can't say that constantly. Um, but, <laughs> but in this example, it sends a daily email until an incident is re resolved. So here you can see incident is created. That's the trigger in the flow. Do the following until wait one day, look up incident, send an email. So every day it's going to look up incident, send an email until the condition is met at the bottom, incident is resolved. So that allows us to, instead of doing something like a, a scheduled job, to send out an email reminder, um, a uh, an email every day, um, or some kind of subflow that we trigger. It allows us to do this very simple contained um, array of activities, um, I guess, within a flow until it's met. And we can do some fancy stuff with it. Now, the example we're actually going to pick on is approval reminders. So let me just dive over to ServiceNow. And what we're going to do is we're going to get to Flow Designer, but we're going to do approval emails, right, or approval reminders. So consider this scenario, and I've done another video on this. It's just a good example I can think of. But consider the fact that we've sent out an approval and we want to constantly remind the people um, that we've sent the approval to that, hey, you've got an approval to do. Now, sometimes we might do that scheduled job, right, and loop through and say for every outstanding approval records every day, have they been sent um, a reminder? If not, send one and we get up to three reminders, for example. I've been there before. We've all been there. Um, but in this case, we're going to use the do the following, the do the following until logic. So I'm going to create a flow. This is Vancouver, by the way. I'm going to call it uh, do the following <laughs> until test. We'll call it demo. Let's get a bit fancy. Demo. And I'm, I'm just going to not do anything else. You should put descriptions. Of course you should. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at um, when the approval record is created. So I can never remember which table it is. Sys approver underscore approval underscore approver approver approvers. Um, <laughs> this one. Approval. Is it? Yeah, let's go with it. Approval record. And in here, we, what we're going to do is go straight away. Uh, we're going to go flow logic. Here we, here we go. Oh, I've got the giggles now. Do the following until. So here we go. Do the following until we select that. And that gives us this do the following until. So we've got a plus in there so we can add some actions until these conditions are met. So until trigger record, approval record. Um, is it state? State is approved. Okay. So that's going to run. Let's just click that so it's easier to see. That's going to run whatever we put in here until it's been approved. Now, we could say approval is created. We probably should. Approval is created and um, state is requested or something, right? Well, you probably should do that. Let's do that. Uh, state is... My laptop's going a bit slow. I need a new one. Um, is requested. Okay. Okay, so we've got our, our basic 
flow here, right? So now what we're going to do is what should we do? Should we send an email? So what we could do is we do action send email, right? Now, what is this going to do? Um, it's not send email. Send email. There we go. But what's that going to do? If I do that, what would that actually do? So we're going to send it to, let's see, approval for, um, is it approving document ID? Approver. There we go. Approver. And we'll just say, um, approve this. Okay. And there are other, right. Let me just mention this. There are other ways to send emails from Flow Designer. This isn't the way I choose. I'm using this for simplicity and for the speed of the video because no one wants to listen to me waffle. If you want to see the other ways that you can send emails from uh, Flow Designer, check out some of my previous videos. I'll put an annoying link up if I remember to do it. Right. What's this going to do? Do the following until, right? It's going to send an email until it's approved. However, what we need to do first is perhaps put in some kind of wait timer, right? So perhaps we need to put in a wait timer. So wait for a duration of time. So then what we can do is say, wait for, you, we can put in a schedule, but let's just put every 24 hours. Yeah. Every 24 hours, you can do explicit duration, relative duration. Um, that might be quite useful to do relative duration of um, the record. Right, now let's save it. Now what this is going to do, now we've put the wait timer in, it's gonna go, approval is created and it's been requested. Every 24 hours, so wait 24 hours, then send the email, go back around the loop. Okay, so it's gonna to get to this bit, go back around the loop. Okay, wait 24 hours, go back around the loop. And that's gonna happen until the approval record is um, approved. How annoying. Now, let's just expand on this a little bit more. Okay, let's get a bit more fancy. So let's say we've got this approval reminder in and the customer's really happy, or at least your um, perhaps IT department's really happy, right? But they kind of say, well, people are getting a bit spammed. They're getting a bit annoyed. We only want to send it three times. So, But the approvals on average take 10 days to approve. So we don't want to send 10 emails, one for every 24 hours. We only want to send three. So what we can do is at the top here, we can, in fact, we'll create it here. We go to flow variables, sorry, on the right-hand side. We can create a flow variable. Now, if we create a um, reminder attempt and we give that an integer okay and up here ooh, we might need to get rid of that and up here the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set that flow variable okay so we go into flow logic i'm doing lots of flow logic there it is do the following until we're going to set a flow variable that we've just created Approval reminder attempts. Now we're going to set that to three. Now, of course, what you could do is you could use the script to go and pick that up from a property and put that in some kind of a property and give that out to, I don't know, catalog um, admins, perhaps, if you wanted to, so they could change their own. However, waffling, three attempts. So we've got the number three. So we're declaring that outside of the do the following, <laughs> the do the following until logic. Inside, once we've sent the email, what we want to do is, is we're going to, change the number that that flow variable is. So it started at three. And here what we want to do is we're gonna go set flow variables. We're going to get approval reminder, approval reminder, sorry, reminder attempts. We're going to pick flow variable. So we're gonna select, so we're gonna set the flow variable to itself minus one, right? So we're setting that flow variable, reminder attempts, to itself. And then we're gonna use this, this function thing, right? So you, you, if you hover, if you go like that, you can't see it. Hover over it, you're gonna be able to click it. And then what you can quite simply do is click the math. There's loads of different functionalities or, or utils that we, we, kind of transformations that we can play with, right? But we're gonna pick subtract. 
You could go add and do it the other way around, but I'm not going to. One. So we're going to subtract one. Okay. And then we're done. Let's get rid of that. So let's just look at what that's doing. We declare the flow variable at the top of reminder attempts to number three. We set it equal to number three. In the loop, the do, do the following until loop, we're taking off one from that number each time it goes around the loop. So the first time it's going to go two, the second time it's going to go one, the third time it's going to go down to zero because we're subtracting the number one from the flow variable. Hope that makes sense. It's just going to keep going down. So now what we can do is we can actually say, stop the reminder when the state is approved or flow variable is zero. We're going to keep going around the loop, keep annoying people with an email, um, which there's better ways to send it. Go and check out another video um, until it's been approved or we're going to keep decreasing. I can't couldn't think of the word then. We're going to keep decreasing the variable that we set right at the start of the flow and until that, when that hits zero, then we're going to stop annoying people. OK, and then we can end this flow. OK, so I hope this is something you can sneak away in your ServiceNow tool belt to kind of pull out when you need it most. And I hope you found it useful. And if you have found it useful, don't forget, like, subscribe and share it with your ServiceNow buddies. Until next time, I've been Russ and this is Service Nerd.